being able to critically evaluate information is a hugely valuable research skill. Why? Uh, because we're surrounded by information today, and not all of it is accurate. Or sometimes the information may be narrowly accurate, but still be so biased, leading, selective, as to be useless for research purposes. Sometimes the information is simply out of date. Sometimes the author is not an expert on the topic that they're writing about. And sometimes the issue is not the accuracy of the information, but rather the, the research quality, depth, and substance. Being a critical consumer of information is helpful, not only in your classes, but also in your daily lives. Just as you want the information in your papers to be based on quality, reliable sources, um, you also want the medical information, the product reviews, and other sorts of information you find personally useful to be reliable. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. When the auto industry faced collapse, Mitt Romney turned his back. Even the conservative Detroit News criticized Romney... For Have you noticed how political advertisements on television end with, I'm, insert a candidate, and I approve this message? The reasoning behind the Stand By Your Ad provision, which was part of the larger Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act of 2002, that requires this tagline is fairly simple. If a candidate isn't held personally accountable for the accuracy of the ads he or she runs, they're more likely to make fallacious and irresponsible claims. By attaching names and reputations to political ads, candidates are less likely to exaggerate the truth and unfairly smear their opponents. That's the thinking, anyway. I'm Mike Huckabee, and I approve this message. So did Chuck. Chuck Norris approved. The broader point is this. How do you really know that a given piece of information is accurate? While there is no single rule that guarantees the correctness of the information in a given article or website, there are ways to increase your confidence in the veracity of the information. If statistics or quotes are provided in an article or website, does the author provide their source? Can the statistic or quote be verified by a reliable second source? If you encounter quotes in a piece of information, could that quote be overly selective or misleading? And can statistics be correct but still be misleading? They can. Misleading graphs or distorted graphs are always a danger. Truncated graphs are a particularly common form of deception via graph. This graph shows rather dramatic change across groups A through E. But notice the y-axis does not begin at zero. Instead, it begins with 9100. If the y-axis did begin with zero, we would see much less dramatic variation across the groups. Quality information sources will cite their statistical data so that researchers can go back to the original source and see the data for themselves. Quotations can also be taken out of context, as in this example. The quote is hardly ambiguous in its distaste for religion, Yet, a look at the full context of the quote, which appears in a letter Adams wrote to Thomas Jefferson, shows a very different meaning. Twenty times in the course of my late reading have I been on the point of breaking out. This would be the best of all possible worlds if there were no religion in it. But in this exclamation I would have been as fanatical as Bryant or cleverly. When you quote from an author or article in a college-level research paper, um, you're presuming that that source in some way uh, strengthens the argument that your paper's making or um, brings fresh insight to your research question. Um, but is that always the case, and, and how can you tell? Um, why cite a, uh, a web-based article, for example, as opposed to your friends or your family? Our educations and life experiences provide each of us with unique expertise. But not all expertise is relevant to a particular research question. A famed political scientist may be an authority on game theory, for example, but that hardly qualifies him or her to conduct heart surgery or draft technical drawings. The quality of your research very much depends on the authority of your sources, so it is important to learn what you can about the authors you cite and what qualifies them to speak authoritatively on a given topic. When you evaluate an article or a website for use in college research, consider these factors. What is the author or organization's credentials? Are any credentials even provided? If not, why do they deserve to be cited? Is the author qualified to write about this topic? What is their area of expertise? 
Is the author affiliated with an educational institution? When we talk about objectivity, we're talking largely about the author's objectives in producing and publishing the information. Why does the article exist? Why does the website exist? What are the biases of the authors or the organization behind the information? Bias isn't necessarily bad. Uh, just because an author or an organization has a particular point of view doesn't mean that their information is inaccurate or lacks authority. The very reason that many groups exist is to advocate for a particular position, and to that end they often collect or generate a lot of high quality research. That said, you will want to be aware of the biases of the authors or groups. And in order to write a well-rounded paper, you will likely want to collect information from the other side of the issue as well. When all your information comes from just one side of a debate, your paper will lack balance and perspective. Keep an eye out for websites that exist in order to promote a particular company or to sell a product. They may have articles and other kinds of research information available on their websites. But do those articles exist in order to further knowledge or to promote their business interests? Also, companies will occasionally run elaborate advertisements on legitimate websites that can look very similar to articles, but are in fact just promotional materials. Do not be fooled and do not use these sites or articles as resources for your papers. Ask yourself, is the information fact, opinion, or propaganda? Is the information well researched? Is there a bibliography or citations or references at the end? Is the author objective and unbiased? Bias, again, is not always disqualifying, but you will always want to be aware of what the author's bias is. Some projects require very up-to-date information in order to be accurate. For example, if you are researching present-day population statistics, you won't want to use the 1980 census figures. When we talk about currency, we're talking about how current the information is in a book or article. For some projects, older information might be fine. But for many topics, currency is a major issue. Ask yourself, when was the information published or produced? Many web pages, though by no means all, will cite the date of the most recent edit somewhere on the page. If you're evaluating a website, are there broken links on the website? That may indicate a website is no longer actively maintained and the information may be outdated. You do not want your total pool of resources to reflect the same bias. Otherwise, you're only getting part of the picture. In part, this is what coverage asks. What part of the picture are you getting with your information resource? Is the material presented at an appropriate level? Does it extensively or minimally cover the topic? Does the research add new information, or does it simply compile information easily found elsewhere? If you have questions about a particular resource, ask your professor or ask a librarian.